Hey guys, Carl here, Cultivate with Carl. And lots of things are going on in the garden. The garden is in transition. The uh, squirrel defense force is on alert. Uh, so we're gonna get into it today, but let's just say that we've had bug pressure problems, we've had heat problems, we've had good things happen, lots of harvest, lots of produce, and we've lost some plants uh, due to bug pressure, heat, and everything like that. So. Let's get right into the garden overview and uh, we'll see what's going on here on your garden update. Well, we were going to start off with the squirrel defense force. There you go. Look at that terrorist. She's ready to get the squirrels. Isn't that right, Ruby? Yeah. Isn't that right, Gunner? Here they come. All right, so let's get started. As you can see, the carrots have been harvested. I'll insert a picture here. Boop. Boop. All right, and so the harvest uh, was a mix. Some of the carrots, uh, I think there's only one or two of respectable size. The rest were too small. Uh, I'm gonna cut them up, use them in salad. So I think that's a plus plus. So we, you know, I will do carrots again in the fall. I will concentrate more on spacing them apart and soil composition. I think that's the lesson learned. They didn't get very big, uh, even though they were in the ground past their uh, due date. So who knows? All right, let's transition over here to the bell pepper or the pepper bed. You can see the banana pepper is, uh, he's running over with banana peppers. You've got jalapenos down there that are, looks like they're ready to harvest. We got a green pepper right there. Uh, the Marconis are doing excellent, and my understanding is they're supposed to turn red. So we're going to have to uh, get those things, hopefully be turning red soon. The Shishitos are starting to turn red, which means they'll be ready to harvest. And I believe I'm going to put them in some pickles. So we got another uh, bell pepper here, regular bell pepper, and we got the snackable bell peppers. So, uh, man, you know, the bell pepper bed has been the winner of the whole thing. Um, Pretty happy with the uh, bell pepper bed. Uh, here's more jalapenos just going like crazy. And uh, there you go, the bell pepper bed. Or the pepper bed, as it were. Look at all those banana peppers. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and trellis these up a little bit more. Uh, stake them to these stakes. Uh, they're starting to get weighty with a lot of the peppers. So we don't want them falling over and bending. And um, my understanding is these things will produce all summer long. So there you go. The pepper bed. Okay, this plant right here is the latest tomato ICU candidate. He uh, not doing well. I don't know what's wrong with the plant. Uh, you know, uh, it's got a couple of fruits on it. So I'm putting it out here. We've got some, uh, you know, that it looks like blight damage, but I don't know. Um, because this thing goes from hot to cold, the leaves look good one day, they look terrible the next day. And it just hasn't thrived as much. They've been fertilized, it was fertilized a couple days ago, uh, and it la actually looked a lot worse. And then um, so a, I separated it out from the rest. I put it out here in the sun, so hopefully it'll get uh, sun. And we get these tomatoes to ripen, and I think we're gonna call it quits on this one. But uh, tomato ICU in the old potato bed. Okay, here is where there's been a lot of good and bad. Uh, at the end of last, or the beginning of last week, I did the video and everything here was fine. We were producing cucumbers at a record rate and then uh, the leaf-footed stink bugs came in. So when I say uh, leaf-footed stink bugs, I mean all of them. So here's a picture of what I was facing. Okay, now you can see all those uh, stink bugs were all over any of the pickles that were any of the cucumbers that were essentially uh, growing at the time. So the fix, you know, get on the internet, of course, fix says uh, get some dish soap, load it up and come out here and spray down your plants. Well, what they didn't say was that if you mix the concentration too much, 
you will burn the crap out of your leaves, which is exactly what I've done. So the uh, leaves are burnt to poop. The plants are looking sad. Some of them are dying. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose uh, some of them, but I do have new growth on the top. So I don't actually know how that's gonna work out. So the plan is to keep harvesting um, because I have a couple ready for harvest. There's one right there. Um, there's another big one on the bottom over there. And that plant, the plant in the front looks like it's going to make it. Um, and, but we're getting new flowers. So, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. The, the growth up top looks good. It's all this stuff down here in the middle that's not looking so hot. So, I've been watering pretty heavy. I, I sprayed it down to get any kind of residual soap off of it. And, uh, I would say I would caution you on um using the dawn dish soap on your cucumbers except for the fact that it did get rid of all the stink bugs it 100 did get the, rid of the stink bugs so they just moved over to my tomatoes but um i think that deep green cucumber right there is going to make it i don't know about the rest but you see they're producing flowers so cucumber wise this is far, by far the most productive plant in the garden. This set of plants right here. Uh, we've already pickled some cucumbers um, and it's gone nuts and look at her. Hopefully she's hunting out stink bugs. She's probably eating tomatoes. That's probably what she's doing. Speaking of tomatoes, let's go to the tomato beds. All right, here is the tomato bed. And so we have had mixed, um, I would guess you could say mixed results from the tomato bed. Now you can see there's a lot of tomatoes on there that, that are ripe and I have a shelf full, you know, it's been producing 100%. But if you look like at this plant right here, you know, uh, the leaves are dying off from the bottom. And then, um, what is she doing? Yeah, you see that? If I, it's not bad enough to put up with the garden pest, I have to put up with the, uh, the big interlopers. Ruby. What are you doing? What are you doing? All right. So some of the plants have just not survived well. Now, my understanding this season, that's going on throughout the south. Uh, there's a lot of plants that are just not thriving. Uh, the heat came early. And um, I have a few that are doing really well. You know, some of these aren't looking that bad. One of the ones in the pots are looking pretty good. So we have some of these were store-bought. They're surviving okay, sun's starting to pop out. But the heat has really beat up these. Um, these were my uh, Bonnie Originals, and these things are supposed to be indeterminates. So, but look at the condition of the leaves and stuff. But like I said, I, I'm, being, I'm seeing videos pop up all over the internet uh, this season of plants doing this. And I think it was because maybe we got that big pop of heat early in May. Uh, there was one day that it went uh, all the way to 90 early on. So who knows? But you know, heck, we've got a lot of tomatoes. I cannot complain. Let's walk down here and look at the buckets. We're just gonna keep rolling and we'll look at the buckets. All right, here's zucchini plant. This is one of my only surviving zucchini plants because of the squash vine borers, and we'll talk about them in a minute. Um, and it's doing pretty good, pretty happy with that. Uh, here's all the area I have to mow. <laughs> but um, this year, this is one of the Hossinator tomato plants. Um, it's doing okay, starting to get tomatoes on it. Pretty happy with that. Now these Hossinators are supposed to do well in the um, hot temperatures. So they look pretty good. They got flowers where all the other plants don't have flowers. Here's another one. Surprised we haven't seen any stink bugs this morning. This is one of the cherry tomato plants. It's a lemon cherry. Man, these things are good. Uh, but the, it's all burned up. And, you know, uh, I, I may hit it too hard with the fertilizer. Um, heck, it's getting huge and we're getting more fruit. So I don't know what's going on with it. You know, we'll let it go a couple days, trim them leaves off. Uh, here's another one. This is a... Uh, heirloom type i have no idea what the name is and of course if you've been watching you know why and then uh 
you know, for some reason, the dogs are digging in the bottom of these. Uh, I don't know. But, man, these little tomatoes are good, too. These are the uh, sun golds. The sun golds are really good. And this plant, despite looking like Charlie Brown's tomato plant, um, it actually produces a lot. Uh, this plant right here, I believe this is probably going to be a hostinator also. Um, it's producing, but the leaves turn yellow. I think that's maybe because I over-fertilized this time. Uh, this was the plant that was in uh, ICU with the uh, blight. And we don't have as much blight. Um, I'm going to trim out some of these uh, branches. Oh, there's a little, little touch of something. I'm going to trim out some of these branches get a little bit more circulation going in here. The goal here is trying to get these uh, tomatoes to turn red. And then we can move on. Here's uh, Roma tomatoes. This was also, they had the blight. And I think this one's going to be, nope. Yeah, we're still good. Roma tomatoes. And then uh, the plants here, the uh, zinnias are dying off. Pretty soon we'll send them off to the great compost pile. And uh, that'll be that. So, not too bad. You know, uh, getting a lot of tomatoes. I mean, you can see a lot of tomatoes from here. Both beds. We were getting a lot of cucumbers, and uh, uh, I can't really gripe about the production at all. Let's go look at the strawberry bed. Okay, this is a um, Kellogg's breakfast tomato plant. Of all the Kellogg's breakfast tomato plants I've planted, this one is doing the best. Um, I'm really surprised. It's over here in the ground. It gets partial sun during the day. Um, probably four to six hours of sun the rest of the garden is getting blasted with sun almost all day long maybe that's a clue you know maybe that's a clue so uh, it's doing great and i'm hoping to get some of the kellogg's breakfast tomatoes off of this we'll see what happens and i, I haven't really pruned it or anything I haven't gone in and taken out any of the suckers or anything like that we're just gonna let this thing grow and see what happens here amongst the weeds you can see the strawberry plants we have lots of strawberry plant, but no strawberries. Um, these were the strawberries that I knocked over the tower, and then I had a, I needed a place to plant them, and I planted them in here when the bed wasn't technically ready. But they seem to be doing fine, and maybe I'll get strawberries next year. Uh, I'm gonna come in here and mulch it because I'm getting a lot of weeds in here, and uh, we'll have to deal with that. But there you go. There's Ruby. Okay, the real tragedy of this week has been the zucchinis. And the zucchinis have fallen victim to the squash vine borer. So I had the big one in here that was producing, and it died. And then I replaced it, and that one died. The other two over there, if you remember, they weren't ever really doing that great, but they were starting to flower. They also died. And I know it was a squash vine borer because I went and pulled on the leaves uh, and the trunk split right in two and you can see the vine borer larvae right in the middle. Here is a picture of what that looked like. Okay, the reason why I believe these are back is because we sprayed them with BT. Nope, you see right here? That's probably gonna be vine borer damage. Yeah, so I'm going to lose these two. That's what it looks like. If I go in there, there's going to be a vine borer. What I'm going to do, before that gets too bad, I'm getting ready to go do it. As a matter of fact, right now, I'm going to go get my hypodermic needle and spray some BT in there and see if it saves it. Because what's happening is that vine borer's in there and it's eating all the insides of the plant and the plant won't be able to get water soon. So uh, the vine borer's. It looks like we got a little powdery mildew on these. And then I bet this one's got vine borer damage also. Yeah, let's see. I don't know. Let me cut some of this back and look. Yeah, it certainly doesn't look healthy. I'll tell you that. So. But hey, one last squash. Good job, plant. Okay, guys. There you have it. The uh, battle this week has been... Uh, with pest and so the vine borers have really uh, done a number on all the squash and zucchini um, There is a tr you know, there's I've sprayed BT 
Unfortunately, I sprayed BT probably after the mom moth laid the eggs on the stalks. Then the little larvae hatched and drilled their way into the stalks. So the BT didn't do good to prevent them there. Now I have learned of a method of uh, wrapping your stalks in aluminum foil while the plants are young to prevent the mom from laying the bugs on the stalks. And we're going to try that because we are early enough in the season that we are going to replace these plants and we are going to try again. So uh, this is just May. So we all have June, July, August, September, October to grow. And uh, we should be able to take these all the way to the frost. It's a shame. Um, on this guy right here because he's bounced back really well and uh, he was on the way up the trellis um, but we'll see the uh, leaf footed uh, stink bug guys were a kick in the butt because they damaged a lot of the produce that was already on the vine they got on there and uh, they take little bites out of it now the produce is still edible you know the cucumbers are still edible I'm still going to pickle some of the better ones but uh, they just don't look as good. So um, I didn't realize I was going to kill my cucumber plants. But again, you know, uh, I had gotten a lot of cucumbers off of them. In fact, I had to give some away. And then we pickled a bunch. And I still have a bunch in the refrigerator. So it's been a good year for cucumbers. So the plan with that also is to um, replant cucumber plants, succession planting those. So uh, I'm going to give them a few more days. If they look like they're going to continue to die, we're going to go ahead and replant some new starts at the bottom. And then when the new starts get going, we will cut the old stuff out and then just uh, and put it in the compost pile. So uh, all in all, I'm, uh, you know, gardening has its ups and downs. And, uh, you know, I still think we're ahead. You know, we were ahead of the bugs by getting such an early crop. And then... The bugs came and we we're dealing with them and uh that's just gardening you know that's what that's what it is so don't get discouraged uh just uh fall back regroup and come up with a plan and so our plan is to uh plant some summer cro crops we're going to plant uh, okra uh probably back here in the tomato bed we're gonna uh, just plant okra down the center and then as those plants die out we'll clip them off at the bottom and then we'll let the okra take over the bed then these pots we're going to probably uh you know i don't know um we'll go in there with something and then we're going to rehab the tomato bed and then i think over there in the carrot bed i'll put in uh maybe four squash plants one in each corner and then uh, we'll just let them go from there but the pepper bed's doing great and we'll keep that uh going and then uh, we'll just keep plugging at it, man. That's what we got to do. Keep plugging. So that's it. That's your garden update. It was kind of long and rambling today, but uh, there's been a lot happening. Uh, we flipped the compost. I've got two compost piles that are underway. Uh, we are going to start flipping them about uh, once every three or four days. We're going to flip and apply water and uh, we're going to get them cooking. And so uh, I looked at the temperature last night on the one bed and it was like about 120 degrees. So uh, um, that's good to go. So the goal will be to have those ready by midsummer. We're going to rehab the beds, uh, put some compost in the beds. I'm going to put some new beds in. We'll talk about that in another video. And then uh, we're going to keep plugging into the fall. So there you have it. It's Carl here from Cultivate with Carl. Also, look me up on Instagram under Cultivate with Carl. You can get there by hitting hashtag Cultivate with Carl. On Instagram, I post a lot of pictures throughout the week. So if something happens like the vine borer, when I found the vine borers, I posted pictures of them. And uh, you'll get updates. And also, I'll link the videos to them. If you're watching on YouTube, I appreciate you guys. Give me that big thumbs up. We have already doubled subscribers from our last week uh, celebration of 20 subscribers. We are now up to 40 subscribers, and I am pretty happy. I appreciate you guys. Uh, I've got some videos coming up on the vine borers, um, uh, doing a plant autopsy and discovering the vine borers. And then uh, I also have a uh, lessons learned video coming up. So um, there you go. I appreciate y'all. Uh, have a great week. Get a hobby. Do something fun. It's Memorial Day. And uh, we should mention the fact that a lot of people sacrificed uh, so that we could pursue our hobbies and be free people. 
Don't ever forget their sacrifice. Y'all have a good one. Carl out here.